three months ago, nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker, Kate Walker, born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olga Efimova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. Hello, Kate Walker. Uh, hello. My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Do you remember the Yukols? Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice, and then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatin, in the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukols migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey, a very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. Afterwards, we continued our journey, and today, we are both here to finish getting better. You lost a leg. It was an accident, you know. Some people don't like nomads like us. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamiatin asked a master craftsman from Velsenbor to make me a new leg, and he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamitin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. If you don't mind my asking about your leg, what exactly happened to you? Soldiers bombed the route we were taking with our caravan. For no reason. Just to frighten us and force us to turn back. I was a bit too close to the explosion. A piece of rock. That's it. You mean the authorities did it on purpose? But why? They think that the snow ostrich migration has no place in today's world, and that my tribe should settle down once and for all. But we will never do that, Kate Walker. That would mean defying the spirits. And the Yukols fear the spirits far more than the soldiers. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Their wool protects us from the cold, their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden, so we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukols, it is rare to be able to boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. The Yukols I've met didn't speak my language anywhere near as well as you. I'm very impressed. From time to time, missionaries and merchants came through our village. I learned very quickly, Kit Walker. It's important if I am to guide my people. Uh... I don't mean to be rude, Kirk, but aren't you a bit young for that? 
The spirits do not take age into account when they choose a chief for the Yukos. And the spirits are very wise. They do not make mistakes when they choose the one who will guide our people on the sacred migration. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kate Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. Bolted tight. This diagram shows how to turn the call button on, but I can't do anything until I can get at the internal mechanism. Search the room. I'm sure you'll be able to find something you can use to open it up with. There's no screwdriver among the medication. I have to admit it's kind of reassuring. That should do the trick quite nicely. Now try to use it to see if you can repair the call button. Can repair the mechanism. If you're not sure, maybe the diagram you saw earlier might help. Finally! Right, now I just have to find a supervisor. Well done, Kate Walker. I'm going to have a bit of a rest now. Please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go. <laughs> Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear Someone should have headaches. a word with the maintenance department. No. Get your bearings. I understood that you'd be staying with us for a little while yet. Well, that's you settled then. Did you speak to Madame Olga or Dr. Mongolin? No. Maybe they're the one. Sticking the damn nails in my head while I'm asleep. The nail through the nostrils. It's just like I told you. The elevator to get out. The only thing now, how am I supposed to open it? Better.
Ah, you're finally awake, number ten. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, number ten. What do you mean, my condition? You're in a coma for quite some time. That's not negligible. And even if you seem better physically, there may well be serious psychological after-effects. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must admit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. On that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. What the? Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right, I do believe that we can begin. Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. Answer me, please! My name is Kate Walker, I was born in New York, and I'll be 30 this year. Good. Good, miss. Up until now, my device would seem to corroborate what you say. You're using a lie detector? It's procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? Absolutely. I get along great with my family and everybody I work with. You don't seem to be particularly scrupulous with regard to the truth, Miss Walker. Unfortunately for you, you were rather more talkative than expected while you were in your coma. A real chatterbox you were, and we took careful notes. We know that lately you had a most unfortunate falling out with all the people you hold dear in New York. Look, your mother, your best friend, and even your fiancé. I understand that it all happened after you met Hans Vorlberg, and also a certain Oscar. Tell me about these gentlemen, please. Oscar was a kind of automaton, very special, very sophisticated, you know, Sometimes it was as if he was almost alive. He was designed by Hans Warburg. Hans was a genius. The last of a long dynasty of precision machinery manufacturers. We went on a very long journey together. Then we landed on a small island in the sea called Siberia. Hans knew that there was still a herd of mammoths there that had survived from prehistory. Hans was obsessed by mammoths. Mammoths? Imagine that. It's a strange story, I admit. But I assure you it's the truth, Doctor. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yuko people, the nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border, refusing civilization and settlement? I think, Doctor, that the Yukos live in harmony with nature, time, and space. They have no real reason to change the way they live. Now that is an example of typical American idealism. Maybe you should go back to New York right away. I'm sure your brilliant ideas will be justly appreciated there. I don't intend on going back. Not now. Later. And maybe never. 
So you intend to continue your journey through our country, a hazardous undertaking with neither goal nor destination. Pity for a brilliant New York attorney who seemed to have a gleaming future. That's not for you to decide, Doctor. For the rest, I think I've demonstrated throughout this interview that I present no psychological after effects from my injuries. I would therefore like you to authorize my release now. Of course, of course. Do calm down, Miss Walker. I'm sorry, but I'm not used to being interrogated like this. Some years ago, I would have interrogated you in a very different manner, Miss Walker. I grant that I may still feel some nostalgia for the good old traditional methods. You're one of the very last representatives of a world that is fast disappearing, Miss Walker. A disordered world that no one will miss. This key is much like you, unstructured and uncontrollable. If you're able to find a way to use it to leave this floor, then you shall have proved that you are permanently cured. I would like to get my things back before I leave. You will find them there. Turn around. You seem somewhat upset. Try looking at the birds in the aviary. That should calm you. Hello. And who might you be, miss? Yeah. Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Kate. Kate Walker. Kate? Kate Walker? That doesn't sound too local. Yeah. So how did you get here, Kate? Kate Walker? The Yukels brought me here. The Yukels? They're nothing but chicken thieves. A whole bunch of scumbag morons doing nothing but infesting the streets of Valsambor. Yeah. Now they've come here to do their dirty work. Ah, uh, you mean Kirk, I suppose. For 20 years we've been in this clinic. Since we got back from Baranor. Listen, this place has always actually been a quality establishment. I don't mind admitting. So we were pretty disappointed when we heard that Madame Olga is now letting in those degenerate scumbags from up north. Come on, Anton, come on. Madame Olga knows very well what she's doing. She must have her reasons for letting those midgets in here. So have you really been here for 20 years? Yeah. At first we were kept for observation with some of our buddies after that damn mission to, uh, Baranur. Leon and me, we're almost the last ones still here now. We don't know what happened to the others. Gotta say, some of them were pretty bad. Worse than us. Some guys who got it pretty bad. Fortunately, Madame Olga looks after us right. They look after us nicely here. Yeah. She looks after us good. She's a real lady, if you want my opinion. Baranur? What's Baranur? A place. It's a goddamn hellhole. What are you talking about, Anton? That's all I have to say about it, Kate. Kate Walker. 
Can't stir up the past. Can you tell me where the exit is, please? It's there. But you won't be able to leave until you've had a meeting with Dr. Mongo Ling in his office. Yeah, he's the one who knows if you're cured or not. I'll be leaving you then, gentlemen. Goodbye. See you around, Kate. Kate Walker. Yeah. See you around. What on earth's wrong, Miss Walker? I don't understand. The key. It didn't work. I did warn you, you know. You can't be at all well enough yet to deserve to be released already. No, there must be a problem with your damn key. Our keys are somewhat old, I will admit. But they've never failed me yet when called upon to do their duty. Well, there's a first time for everything. You can see that I managed to use the key and that I am perfectly cured. I have the right to leave. Impossible, Miss Walker. The rule is very clear. Only those patients who are capable of opening the door may leave this floor. You won't help me. I want to speak with your superior, Dr. Olga. You can do that when she comes by to see you for her daily visit. But please don't count on me to disturb her before then. There's a problem with the key. That's obvious. I need to find out where it comes from. I already know that everything works here. Let's check the key. These holes. It looks like something's been removed from the key. No doubt about it. My key's been deliberately damaged. 
I need to find a perfect copy if I want to be able to repair it. Ah, Kate. Kate Walker. How's it going? You look kind of down. Well, I had a problem. I bet you went and flunked Dr. Mongo Ling's test, right? But don't go flipping out over it, Kate. Kate Walker. I could never figure out how I was supposed to pass those damn tests either. I did fine in the interview, and he gave me the key to the exit. The problem is, I can't open the door. It doesn't work. Sometimes things just aren't obvious around here. I gotta tell you, Kate, Kate Walker, Leon, who is a lot sneakier than me. A few years ago, he got through the interview okay, and also actually got that damn key from the doctor. Yeah, but I never got the damn door open. Same as you. There's something really wrong with this place. That weird interview we have to go through doesn't surprise you? And all of that just to get a key that doesn't open anything? Dr. Olga told us lots of times, Kate, Kate Walker. In this place, talking bad about the protocol is proof you're really sick. Yeah, Dr. Olga knows what she's doing and you can really trust her. When we're better, our minds will be able to understand how the key works, you see? According to the picture, there's a pin missing. I need to find a way to fix it. But how am I going to manage it? How are you, Kate Walker? Is your departure from the clinic imminent? I'm afraid not. You seem upset. What's wrong? I have to use a kind of key to open a door and finally get out of this place. It's a kind of a test, you know? A test that I passed, but the key didn't work. And when I compared it with an original, I saw it had been sabotaged. I'm getting the impression they're trying to keep us here by any means, Kirk whether we want to stay or not. That's a serious accusation. Are you sure? Hmm. 
The proof is building up. First, there's that key which doesn't work, and that bed you're trapped in, and your missing prosthesis. It's true that I've been very weak since I began Madame Olga's treatment. But she says that it's normal. She calls it temporary secondary effects. We really need to get out of here, Kirk. Unfortunately, I cannot undertake the long migration of the ostriches without the mechanical leg, Kate Walker. But you, on the other hand, you can leave. But how? Show me the model of the key you told me about. Hmm, that's what I thought. With this, my tribe Smith should be able to repair your key. If, of course, you find a way to get it to him. I doubt they have a postal service here. Go on to the balcony. Our shaman's messenger is never very far. I use it to communicate with my people. You can give it the key. It'll take it to my tribe Smith. Got it. Thank you so much, Kirk. Kirk's tribe's camp, I guess. This must be Valsambur, the town Kirk told me about. Hey you! Bertie! Bertie! I've got something for you! About that bird, Kirk. I must be doing something wrong. It won't come to me when I call it. It's true that the old owl is a bit of a lunatic. Have you tried to get it to land on the balcony? No, but I don't see what I can use for that. Look around the yard, Kate Walker. You may find something that might interest the board. Why not? I'll give it a shot. Thank you for your help, Kirk.
The owl flew away with the key, Kirk. That's good news, Kate Walker. Now we only need... Kirk. What's wrong? Do Dr. Olga's treatment. Kirk! Kirk! Can you hear me? Wake up! Come, come. No need to be alarmed, Miss Walker. Who are you? And what have you done to Kirk? You're the one who put him in this torture device. Calm down, Miss Walker. I'm Dr. Olga Efimova. You're- I don't care who you are. Bring Kirk round. Immediately! Fainting is a secondary effect inherent in the treatment, Miss Walker. Nothing more. In medicine, despite any discomfort, protocol must be respected. Oh, you mean that horrible mechanical bed where that poor boy is waiting for a prosthesis that never comes? That's protocol? And I suppose the same is true for the absurd interrogation I had to go through. You seem to have developed a singular paranoia since you came out of the coma. When we get the chance, I'll look into it. But for now, I'm going to ask you to please leave. I have to administer the next stage of the treatment to your young friend. Fine, I'm leaving. I hope all this is going to help him. Well then, I can't imagine why you might think the opposite. Miss Walker. How is he? Your young friend is reacting to the treatment very well. Everything is fine. He's resting. Well, goodbye, Doctor. I'll come by and see you very soon, Miss Walker. Don't worry. What on earth could that quack have injected him with? Kate Walker. Kirk. How do you feel? Not very well, I'm afraid. This situation can't go on, Kirk. So what can I do to help you get out? The best thing, Kate Walker, is for you to go along. And if you really want to help me, once you are outside, go to Valsambor and try to recover my prosthesis from the craftsmen. If you bring it back to me, Dr. Zamiatine will put it on, and I will be able to go back to my tribe. Can we trust Dr. Zamiatine? I'm not so sure what I see what this clinic is like. The man has always been a friend to the Ukols, and I'm sure he'll be able to help you leave the hospital and find the craftsman in Valsambor. Okay. I promise to come back as soon as I can with your prosthesis, Kirk. Until then, hang in there. Thank you, Kate Walker, and may the spirits be with you.